All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we are going to talk about uh, Errol Spence Jr., according to sources, going to 154 and staying there. And Terrence Crawford's team saying that Terrence Crawford will haunt him for the rest of his career into 154 pounds. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we're going to be in the 154 pound division where Errol Spence Jr., according to multiple reports, is going to stay, and a lot of speculation, might I say, is going to say stay at 154 pounds after his fight with Keith Thurman, therefore vacating his belt, and also some things that Terrence Crawford's team had to say about that and what that means for Errol Spence Jr. for the rest of his career. Now, before I get into that, though, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please accept my invitation to hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. Also, if you are a longtime subscriber and supporter, thank you so much for your continued support in the super chats and the super thanks, uh, especially the super thanks in videos like this. Also, thank you for supporting by hitting that like button and sharing the video. It really does mean a lot. Um, now, let's get into this. As many people know, right, and have are suspecting, Errol Spence Jr. will be fighting Keith Thurman for the W to, to defend or not defend, excuse me, to satisfy his WBC mandatory obligation uh, for his 147 pound belt against Keith Thurman. But the fight is going to be at 154 pounds. Whole lot of people, the most recent one, Tim Bradley, threw a hissy fit about it saying, why would you do that? What's going on? Is can he not make 147 pounds anymore? Can Keith Thurman not make any one, any, uh, a 147 pounds anymore. Uh, what's going on? He, he's lying. He, uh, Errol Smith is lying. He said that that was the fight that he wanted with Terrence Crawford. So now he's moving up with weight, right? You also have people like Jerron Ennis who are saying, talking about it, saying, hey, man, Errol's going to go up to 147. I don't see him coming back down to 154 pounds. And uh, I think that based off, I mean, considering what they say, I think that there's probably some a good amount of truth to that, that once Errol Spence Jr. does go up to 154 pounds, that he may not come down. That is something that Errol Spence Jr. himself had said when he before the Ordainis Ugas fight, he said, look, I got two more fights left in 147. I've got your Danny Ugas and I've got Terrence Crawford. And after that, that's it. I'm moving up to 154 pounds. Well, he got his Jordanis Ugas fight. He did not, however, get his Terrence Crawford fight. But it seems as if uh, in that fight with Terrence Crawford, he was trying to make for last year. Seems like he jumped back on his time frame and now he's going to 154 pounds. Now, I was listening to a uh, an interview that went on with a mem team member of um, of. Terrence Crawford, where and this is some other things that other boxing fans have said that this is and what Tim Bradley was saying is that this is going to haunt Errol Spence Jr. for the rest of his career. The fact that excuse me, the fact that he uh, it did not make the biggest fight uh, the, of his career at 147 pounds versus Terrence Crawford. Bernie the Boxer also goes on to say that he, even when uh, Terrence Crawford, uh, Errol Spence Jr. is up there with, with Jermel Charlo, that Terrence Crawford is going to move up to 154 pounds and he will still be haunting him there and how boxing fans uh, of Errol Spence Jr. are are going to turn on Errol Spence Jr. because of the fact that he did not make that Terrence Crawford fight, right? It's pretty much same thing that uh, that Tim Bradley said. Now, if you're familiar with my ch my channel, I often point out uh, things like this where you start hearing the same 
comments coming from multiple different areas. But however, it's the same comment, right? Tim Bradley says, oh, he's going to it's going to haunt him for the rest of his career or or, you know, he let down his fans and his fans are going to know that he did not do this. And Bernie the Boxer saying, oh, he's going to haunt him for the rest of his career. His fans are going to know this. Let me tell you, man. And I'm this is where we get into like my point of view on it. Um, Terrence Crawford. There's this situation is similar to this, man. It's similar to like Humpty Dumpty. Okay. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall, right? <laughs> and then he falls to the bottom. And then I don't remember the little segue in between, but at the end of it says, not all of the horses, uh, king's horses, nor all the king's men could put Humpty Dumpty back together again. In my opinion, Humpty Dumpty is Terrence Crawford because Terrence Crawford was the one that has the big misunderstand, had the big missed opportunity. He was the one that turned the fight down. He was the one that time in and time out over and over and over again said that he did not want the fight. And he is the one that does not have the big fan base. From what I can see, there are a lot of people that are upset with the fact that Terrence Crawford, um, that the Errol Spence Jr. Terrence Crawford fight did not get did not get made. However, most of the people that I've interacted with uh, and most of the people will just at the end of the day, chalk it up to a fight that did not happen. Right now, people who are on YouTube and people that are on Twitter that go back and forth about it and really pay attention to everything that is said and, you know, who said what on this, you know, in this interview and what did this particular person say about the contract and all of that. At the end of the day, all of that stuff is probably going to go out in the wash and what you're going to wind up being left with is just simply the fact that the fight did not take place, which means that those two fighters are going to be left exactly where they were before the fight did not get made. Unfortunately for Terrence Crawford, that means he's going to be right there without a lot of fans because that's where he was before all of this conversation with about Errol Spence Jr. Uh, fighting Errol Spence Jr. was. A lot of the conversation amongst really hardcore boxing fans are that Terrence Crawford is a very, very good fighter. Without a doubt, a whole lot of people have him up very high in the pound for pound list. I had him number one on my pound for pound list after Ter after Canelo Alvarez popped dirty for performance and asking drugs. I had to move him off after he didn't make, make the Errol Spence Jr. fight because it's just too many games for me. However, that is where he was. So you're going to continue to have people that are going to think that he's a very, very good fighter. However, his the way that his fights sell and the excitement around his fights are going to remain exactly where they were before the Errol Spence Jr. situation, which is not very, not, you know, better than most boxers, but nowhere near the top elite fighters in the sport as far as you know, their name, their name, the amount of interest, fan interest that are generated around their fight. Errol Spence Jr., I have a suspicion, is going to stay right where Errol Spence Jr. is until Errol Spence Jr. has another opportunity to come up and make a big fight. And that is a guy that is selling out, that can sell out Texas Stadium for a $5 million gate and do 300 to 350, 400,000 pay per views, right? Now, and I think that that is what's going to happen now. But as far as the fighting go, fights go, Terrence Crawford has got a little bit more difficult road because if he stays at 140 pounds, 47 pounds, I'm not sure who he's going to fight unless he fights those young guns coming up. Because if Errol vacates those belts, that means Jerron Jer Jer Ennis is immediately going to be fighting for the vacant IBF belt. More than likely, you're going to have Virgil Ortiz and the winner of Virgil Ortiz and Stanley Onis immediately fighting for that W uh, that WB uh, that WBA belt. And then the WBC belt again is going to be up and available for whoever it is more than who, for whoever it is that is ranked in, in the top few in the WBC, which I suspect would probably be somebody like maybe the guy Via who beat um, um, Rashidi Ellis or somebody, maybe somebody moving up from 140, pound, 140 pounds in a division to take to get that belt, which means that in order to get another big fight, Terrence Crawford is going to have to fight some of those young guns. So, I mean, to me, 
I don't really agree with the fact that it's going to haunt Errol Spence Jr. I think it's just going to be a situation where people think that the fight didn't happen. Some people are going to think Errol Spence Jr. was the reason and a whole lot more are going to believe it's Terrence Crawford seeing as Terrence Crawford's the one that turned down the fight. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.